Hello and welcome to this edition of What Did I Miss, where today I will be going over the sixth episode of Star Trek Lower Decks titled Terminal Provocations and looking for Easter eggs, references, and annoying things that turn out to be deadly. Before we put on our choo-choo shirts, please hit that like button and if this is your first time visiting the channel, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button as well. This episode of Lower Decks followed both pairs of officers on separate but deadly scenarios which both leaned heavily on past Star Trek plot lines. Stick around for the encore and I'll let you know what I think of the episode as well as share some of the information I learned this past week during the CBS Star Trek Day Celebration Lower Decks panel. This is What Did I Miss? Okay, so this is your weekly spoiler warning for this episode. If you have not watched the sixth episode of Lower Decks yet, please go watch it and then come back here and watch this. The main plot of the episode follows Boims, Mariner, as well as their fellow crewman Fletcher as the Cerritos tries to negotiate a salvage exchange with a race known as the Drukmani. After offering to do his crewmates work while they go to a concert, Fletcher is unable to complete the work and tries to assimilate his brain with an isolinear core. The core becomes sentient and tries to take over the ship while Fletcher continues to try to avert any responsibility for the situation. Boimler and Mariner are able to jettison the core through an airlock which inadvertently disables the Drukmani ship and saves the Cerritos. In the end of the episode, Ensign Fletcher is transferred to another ship and six days later we find out that he has been fired. This is actually the second episode we have seen Ensign Fletcher as he was in the bar in the first episode of the season named Second Contact. Ensign Fletcher was voiced by comedian Tim Robinson, and although they were not together in the episode for a great deal of time, the voice actors who play Ensign Tendi and Ensign Fletcher worked together on Saturday Night Live for three years. In the cold open, Boimler mentions the warp core sound of the Enterprise D. This was the Galaxy-class starship featured throughout the Next Generation's run on television and was destroyed in their first feature film titled Generations. This event led to Lieutenant Commander Worf joining Deep Space Nine as well as the new Enterprise E that debuted in First Contact. As I said, the Cerritos is in an argument over salvage with a Drukmani vessel. Space salvage has been shown to be a very profitable enterprise and in the show Voyager, a race known as the Malon built their entire economic system around it. Boimler mentions that Fletcher saved him from a bar fight with some Nausicans who tried to eat his heart. Captain Picard was stabbed through the heart by Nausicans while he was in Starfleet Academy, an event that changed his life and was depicted in the Next Generation Season 6 episode, Tapestry. The B story of the episode follows Ensigns Rutherford and Tendi as they prepare for a probable spacewalk to retrieve the lost salvage from the wreckage. Rutherford re reveals that he designed a holodeck program to help with simulations such as this. During the fight with the Drukmani, the holodeck disables the safety protocols and Rutherford and Tendi must fend for their lives against Rutherford's holodeck creation. In the end, they are able to survive the ordeal and restart the program. While discussing her fear of spacewalking, Ensign Tendi says her professor just gave her a B for the class involved. She is of course an Orion, and the species has been shown to be able to persuade men by using their own pheromones, much like the character from Batman, Poison Ivy. Rutherford builds his own training program on the holodeck. We have seen this a few times before, uh, probably the most famous was Jadzia Dax, built a training program that Lieutenant Commander War found after he arrived on Deep Space Nine, which started their courtship during the Season 4 episode, The Way of the Warrior. Rutherford mentions using the holodeck is not just for hanging out with the likes of Socrates, Sherlock Holmes, Da Vinci, Stephen Hawking, Robin Hood, Sigmund Freud, and Einstein. Most of these characters were shown on The Next Generation, but Leonardo Da Vinci was actually a semi-reoccurring character on Voyager and played by John Rhys Davis, who is most famous for playing Gimli in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Cyrano de Bergerac was also mentioned by Rutherford, but actually he was not shown as a holodeck character before, but instead played on the holodeck by Reginald Barkley in the season 4 TNG episode named The Nth Degree. In that same episode, while in the holodeck, Barkley is connected to the computer, which makes him smarter, similar to what Ensign Fletcher attempts to do in this episode. The companion program uh, Rutherford designs is named Badgie, and is of course a farce of the former office assistant named Clippy, 
Clippy was an animated character that Microsoft rolled out with an operating system that was designed to help users interface better with a computer. Instead, it made people hate their computers and is probably one of the reasons Apple is so popular still today. Even Badgie's mannerisms and things that it says are similar. For instance, Clippy would ask, can I help you repeatedly? And in the episode, Badgie continually asks as he can teach you a lesson. The animations would also cause buffering on your computer, which is another common issue for Badgie. Magnet boots are referenced while Rutherford and Tendi are attempting the spacewalk simulation. Magnet boots have been shown to be vital to spacewalking and were a plot point in the movie The Undiscovered Country. This is yet another episode of Star Trek in which a holodeck tries to kill people. I mentioned in my prior episodes that this is one of the silliest reoccurring issues in Star Trek. In reality, these things would be nowhere near a spaceship. One thing Rutherford does while trying to escape Badgie is that he creates a crowded Bajoran marketplace. In the movie First Contact, Captain Picard creates a crowded nightclub scene from a noir novel to escape and eventually kill a couple of newly assimilated Borg. Once the isolinear core becomes alive, it starts assimilating parts of the ship and grows bigger and stronger. A piece of technology melding with others to grow or evolve has been shown before in the Season 5 episode of Voyager named Drone, in which the Doctor's mobile emitter is assimilated by a piece of Borg technology and becomes essentially a Borg from the 29th century. Q is mentioned more than once in the episode, and Q is also a big part of the TNG episode Tapestry that I referenced a bit earlier. This week, a trailer for the rest of the season was released, and Q is shown to appear on a future episode of Lower Decks. Mike McMahon revealed during the Lower Decks panel on Star Trek Day this past Tuesday that John Delancey would be reprising the role. When Rutherford and Badgie first get into a fight, Rutherford uses a double fist punch. I mentioned in an earlier episode, when Commander Ransom repeatedly used the maneuver, that this was a fighting move made famous by Captain Kirk. And I'm sure it was very cathartic for anyone else that had used an OS that had Clippy on it back in the day to see this representation of it get double fist punched. Badgie calls Rutherford father. We have seen a creation call their creator father before in Star Trek, especially with androids, as Data considers Dr. Noonien Soon to be his father and Lore and B4 to be his brothers. At first, the Doctor hologram on Voyager does not seem to see his creator, Dr. Zimmerman, as his father, Although he does develop a method to save his life in the season six episode, Lifeline, and, then, and in the end, they do take a picture together as father and son. Right before Badgie is killed, he utters the words diplomatic immunity. This is the concept that a member of a foreign government is not subject to the same laws as a normal citizen. And it could be a callback to a famous death scene from the movie Lethal Weapon 2. After Fletcher gets promoted, he is transferred to the USS Titan. Following the events of the movie Star Trek Nemesis, as well as the events of Picard, we know that Captain Riker is at the helm of the Titan during this time. One of the last lines of the episode has Mariner talking about taking the keys to the captain's yacht. This craft is designed as a support vessel and was actually shown and used in the movie Star Trek Insurrection. I really like this episode, and this makes at least two episodes in a row that I thoroughly enjoy. During the Lower Decks panel on Star Trek Day, Mike McMahon, the creator and showrunner of the show, admitted that the second half of the season was his favorite, and so far, I wholeheartedly agree. I am really starting to hear the voice of the show and understand its corner of the Star Trek universe. If anyone was expecting this show or crew to do epic things like prior casts have done, they would be disappointed. But what Lower Decks does have in common with other iterations of Star Trek is that the characters, at their core, are good people trying to do things together the best they can. To me, this is the heart of Star Trek, and this show has a lot of that. I think the humor is also starting to make sense in this world, and does not feel so foreign. In fact, I think I laughed out loud for a good 30 seconds when the Drukmani captain said bleep you to Captain Freeman after she had been trying to do her best to avoid any type of conflict. This humor would not have worked on any other ship, but it fell right into place on the Cerritos. I can definitely call myself a fan of this show at this point and look forward to the rest of the season. And if you did not catch the Lower Decks panel during Star Trek Day, I highly recommend it and I will put a link to the video in the description of this video. But you let me know what did I miss. Also, let me know in the comments if your opinion has changed about the show and what did it for you. For me, it was the last two episodes as well as watching the panel. 
Seeing how much these people care about the end product really made me appreciate their work more. I hope that you appreciate my work in this video and you will like and subscribe and I will see you next time on What Did I Miss?